While surveying the site of some ancient ruins, two young archaeologists, Derek and Margot, and their nomad friend, Moki, find themselves trapped and sinking in a whirling pool of sand. And when the dust settles, they stare up in awe at a vast chamber filled with giant relics and artifacts from another civilization. And there, at the far end of the cavern, a door with a strange inscription. All who enter these portals pass through time. Guys, I've got to have some food. I'm a growing boy. You mean a groaning boy. My stomach's pushing on my backbone, but maybe there's something over the hill. Do you hear something? You mean like bacon sizzling, popcorn popping, crackers crunching, uh, sodas fizzing? Shh! Listen. Well, unless it's my stomach growling, it sounds like music. Come on, let's go to the top and see. Sounds like a party. Let's go. Yeah, a party means food. <laughs> uh, excuse me, miss. We're strangers to your city. I'm Margo. This is Derek, and that's Moki. What's happening? Where are all the men going? Welcome. I am Esther. King Ahoshverot has been feasting with all the royal princes for many days, and now he has invited all the men of the city to come and enjoy the feast. Feast? Hey, we're men. Do you think we could go to the feast? Well, thanks a lot, fellas. Relax, Margo. We'll bring some back to you. Sure, they must have takeout. Please come in. My cousin Mordecai is going to the feast. We'll ask him. Cousin Mordecai, this is Margot, Derek, and Moki. They are strangers to our city. Could the boys go with you to the feast? I will prepare food for Margot. Well, there are so many attending the feast, I'm sure you could go. Put on your finest robes, as we will be in the king's presence. Huh, sorry, but these are all we got. Mm, not exactly appropriate. Come with me, boys. We'll find something. Please sit down, Margot. I will fix us some food. Esther, you said King Ahasuerus, so that means we're in Persia. But I noticed from some of the articles in your home that you must be Jewish. Yes, a great many of our people have returned to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. But many of us remain here where we have been born and raised. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> you both look magnificent. <laughs> Esther, we will not be late returning. I'm sure our guests will be sleeping with us tonight. Yes, cousin. Enjoy yourselves. Yo, no problemo. This is living. I wish Margot could have come. Huh? Yeah. Oh, don't be frightened, Moki. She's Hasmin, the palace pet. Very friendly. 
<laughs> I think she likes you, Moki. <laughs> well, a guy can't have too many friends. <laughs> well, noble princes of Persia and Medea, what do you think of the riches and wonders of my glorious kingdom and my excellent majesty? Ah, majesty, you are all powerful, from India to Ethiopia, and you have excellent taste in food and drink, and an eye for beauty. Speaking of beauty, how is your beautiful Queen Vashti? Uh, will our eyes behold the beauty of your Queen Vashti? Yes. Yes, of course. Now you shall have a feast for your eyes. Go, summon Queen Vashti. Bring her here that my guests might view her. At once, Your Majesty. Oh, the Queen must be pretty. Yes, boys, she is beautiful. Hmm. If I were she, I don't think I'd like being paraded out here to be displayed like a prize horse or something. You are probably right, Derek, but the king's commandments must be obeyed. Yes, my lords, what is it? Your Majesty, His Royal Highness King Ahasuerus desires your presence in the Great Hall. It shall be our pleasure to escort you. My lords, you shall not have that pleasure. Oh? I have no desire to go. But, but His Highness commands you. I will not be a spectacle for all that rabble. If the king wants to see me, let him come here. I shall inform His Majesty of your reply. She refuses to come. Said she would not be a spectacle for your rabble. Rabble? What shall be done with Queen Vashti? She has not obeyed my commandment. She has insulted not just your majesty, but also all the princes and all men in the provinces of your kingdom. When the women of the kingdom hear of this, they shall have no respect or obedience to their husbands. If it pleased the king, write a royal commandment that Queen Vashti be banished for her disobedience, and then choose another queen that is better than she. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, this must be. Appoint officers in all your provinces to gather all fair young maidens into the palace, and let the maiden who best pleases you be queen instead of Vashti. Very good, Haman. I appoint Lord Haman above all princes. He will carry out my wishes. All shall bow to him and show respect. Now go see that Queen Vashti is banished from Shushan and start the search for my new queen. I do not trust Haman. <laughs> I wouldn't buy a used car from him. What a watch. Car? Watch? <laughs> uh, just, just a, a little, little inside, inside joke. joke. afraid, Margot. That's just Hasmin, the palace pet. She often follows cousin Mordecai home and goes back with him when he goes to work. Esther, the king has banished Queen Vashti for refusing to obey him. He is sending out officers to gather all fair maidens in his kingdom, and... And the best-looking one will quiet, Moki. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I just got excited. That's true, Moki. The maiden who most pleases the king shall be queen. Boy, that's a Cinderella story for you. Cinderella? Oh, uh, nothing. Now, Esther, I am sure the officers shall include you as they gather the maidens. And with your beauty, you might be chosen. But Cousin Mordecai, how could I be queen? The king is Persian, and I am a Jewess. As queen, you could be a great influence for our people. The king need not know you are Jewish. You'd be a great queen. And just think of all those feasts. Oh, it's so exciting. A queen. Esther, my dear, if the king were to choose you for queen, it would be for a good purpose. Go and seek out the most beautiful maidens in the royal city. Bring them here for the king to choose his new queen. to another. 
officer of King Ahasuerus. We are gathering the fairest young maidens throughout the kingdom, one of which the king will choose for his queen. I believe a young maiden of great beauty lives here. Yes, she does. I shall bring her to you. Stand up. I am an officer of the king. Oh, oh, oh yes, sir. Ah! Oh. Wow. She won't hurt you, sir. She's just a bit cranky until she's had her breakfast. This is my cousin, Esther. Yes, she should be a contender. Come, into the chariot. If the king does not choose you, you shall be brought back. Hmm. You are not unattractive. Well, thanks a lot. Come, the king might just find you amusing, if not beautiful. Oh, not on your life, Buster. I've got things to do and places to go, and the palace is not one of them. Buster! I am Tarsek, officer of the king. And it is not on my life, but on yours if you refuse. Hey, fellas, help me. I don't want to be queen. I haven't even graduated from high school yet. Oh, don't worry, Margo. You'll be out on the first ballot and back here in no time. <laughs> yeah, it might be a lot of fun. Oh, on the first ballot, huh? huh. Come on, Esther. Would you mind if we wait around for Margaret to come back? Yes, it shouldn't take long. Of course, you are both welcome in my home. Hey, Guy, there are two more maidens for the king to see. Take these maidens and dress them. Quickly, the king is ready to choose his queen. I must go to my work at the palace grounds. Would you like to come with me? I could get your work in the kitchens. You could be near your friend Margot. Yes, that would be great. The food in the king's kitchen must be the best. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, oh, that's oh, that's so Here comes that guy everyone is supposed to bow to. Yeah, we had better bow and avoid any trouble. <laughs> you two aren't the best of friends, huh? Mordecai, if looks could kill, you'd be dead. Oh, it's all right. We just have a little difference of opinion. Oh, I'm so excited. Maybe you should have a chance. Oh, I don't understand this. Now I will escort you into the throne room, where each of you will be seen by the king. But do not approach his majesty until called. And if he holds out his golden scepter to you, you must touch the tip of the scepter. If you do not, by law, you shall be put to death. <gasps> Girl, Esther, you're next. Now, Esther. What is your name? Esther, Your Majesty. Ah, oh, your voice is like music. You are most gracious, sire. Now look into my eyes. Tender as a dove. I need see no more. Esther shall be my queen. All right, hooray! Oops, sorry. His Majesty King Ahasuerus is pleased to present his new queen, Queen Esther. Hooray! Celebration!
mission begin! Perish! During this celebration, the king and guards will be merry with wine. It's our one chance to slay the king. That's right. It will be a good time. Did you hear that? Who are those guys? They are doorkeepers and traitors to the king. The king should be warned. Yes, I must get word to his majesty. But I cannot approach him unless summoned. Ah, I will tell Queen Esther and she can tell him. Yeah! Your cousin Mordecai says he must speak to you at once. Excuse me, my lord. I must speak to my lady in waiting. Don't be long, my dear. Esther, my queen, you look troubled. What is it? I have just learned from your gatekeeper, Mordecai, that he overheard your doorkeepers, Big Son and Teresh, plotting to murder you during the celebration. Ah, I have sensed their growing disloyalty. Well, a dagger in the back would spoil the celebration. But this assassination plot shall not happen. Haman! Your Majesty? Have guards search the palace. Find Big Son and Teresh. Arrest them and prepare the gallows for them. At once, Your Majesty. <laughs> Mordecai, again you do not bow to me. I'm second in command to the king. Everyone must bow to me, even you. I am a Jew, Haman, and I do not bow to you. Careful, Mordecai. If you will show me no respect, perhaps you would respect the gallows. <laughs> King, there are certain people scattered throughout your countries who obey their own laws instead of yours. They may even resist paying taxes to you and will cause trouble throughout your kingdom. One of them even works in your grounds as gatekeeper. Let there be your law that these people be killed. I will even pay the soldiers to do it. Yes, yes, issue the edict to kill these troublemakers. Put my seal upon it and it shall be law. Jews in the royal city of Shoshan and the provinces of King Ahasuerus shall be gathered together and hanged on the gallows by order of Haman, second in command to King Ahasuerus. No! No! What have we done? What have we done? Esther will be a great queen. It's nice for Margot living it up as a lady in waiting to Esther, but we are going to have to be on our way soon. What is it, friends? Read that. We are doomed. Uh, I have brought this upon our people through the hatred Haman has for me. I shall tear my garments, put on sackcloth and ashes, and mourn with you. Look, you must somehow get your friend Margot and flee, as you are not Persian and are guests in my home. You are in grave danger. What is this sackcloth and ashes Mordecai has to wear? It's a custom in these days when things are very sad and there is dying, the people put on a rough cloth and sprinkle ashes on their heads. Hey, Esther is Jewish. This could mean her too. Oh, I could really get to like this life. I wonder where Mordecai is. He has always come under this window each night, and it has been days since I have seen him. Listen. Something is wrong. Nothing seems to be moving in the city, and there are these strange sounds. What can it be? 
Permit me, Your Highness, but the sounds you hear are many people in the city who are weeping and in mourning. They're wearing sackcloth and have put ashes on their heads. And your cousin Mordecai, the gatekeeper, is one of them. Oh, Esther, what do you suppose is wrong? I do not know. I will, I will send him some new raiments. Perhaps that would make him happy. Yes, a new outfit always gives me a lift. Take my cousin some new robes so that he might cast off that sackcloth. At once, Your Highness. Your Highness, Mordecai the gatekeeper refuses the robes and still wears the rough sackcloth. I will send Hitak, the King's Chamberlain, to Mordecai and find out what has caused this. Oh, Hatak, my friend. It is because of Haman's hatred towards me that the king commanded that I and all my people be put to death. You must take this to Queen Esther. Tell her she must go to the king and plead for the lives of her people. No one can approach the king without being called, or they'll be put to death, even the queen. It's the law. Tell her if she remains silent now, she and all her people will be destroyed. And Mordecai said, it may be for this purpose you have been made queen over this kingdom. Tell Mordecai to gather all our people together and fast for three days and nights. I will do the same, and then I will go to the king against his law. Oh, but your highness, the king might put you to death. I must do this, and if I perish, I perish. Here, let me help. If I do not come back within the hour, find your friends Derek and Moki and leave the city. enters the king's council chamber unless summoned. I am queen of this kingdom. The queen? She was not summoned. It means death. My lord, forgive me. I, I could not wait to be summoned. I must speak to you. Please. Come, my dear. Now, what do you have to tell me that you would risk death for? My lord, I desire that you and Prince Haman come to my quarters tomorrow night. I shall prepare a banquet, and then I shall make a request of you. A banquet? <laughs> you, you hear a banquet? <laughs> <laughs> you are the most beautiful and bravest lady in my kingdom. We shall be there, eh, Haman? I shall inform my wife and household of this great honor. Oh, wife, your husband's star is on the rise. Tomorrow night, the queen has prepared a banquet in her quarters for just the king and me. Then I shall hang that accursed Mordecai and begin the extermination of his people. Prepare my finest robes. Ah, oh, what joyous happenings. Margo, I am worried that... Oh, Esther, it will work. It's got to. Make way for the king. I'll be in the next room. My lords, please be seated. Ha <laughs> ha! A banquet fit for a king. <laughs> a wonderful feast, my dear. Now... What is your request? Even to half my kingdom, it shall be granted. If I have found favor in your sight and to grant my petition, let the king and Haman come to another banquet I will prepare for you tomorrow, and I shall make my request then. Very well, Queen Esther. Tomorrow your banquet and your request. 
just the king and I were at the Queen's banquet. And tomorrow, I'm invited again with the king to another of the Queen's banquets. But all this means nothing as long as Mordecai the Jew sits at the king's gate. Let a gallows be made. And tomorrow, speak to the king about this Mordecai. Then, go merrily to the banquet, and the next morning, hang him. Of course. The king has signed the edict. Guard. Guard! Send in the Keeper of Records that I may read the Chronicles. At once, Majesty. Hmm. Who was it that warned Queen Esther of Big Son and Teresh's plot to assassinate me? Mordecai! What honor and dignity has been given Mordecai for his warning? Nothing has been done for him, Your Majesty. Send Lord Haman to me at once. You say the king desires my presence immediately? He probably wants to reward me for the way I have handled the accursed Mordecai and the Jewish problem. Lord Haman, what shall be done to the man that the king would be pleased to honor? Oh, well, <laughs> Your Majesty. Let the man who has pleased you be dressed in your royal robes, put upon the king's horse, and with a royal crown on his head. Have one of your noble princes lead him through the city and proclaim that this is done for the man the king delights to honor. Yes, Hayden. You are the noble prince. I command you to take royal robes and crown and put them on Mordecai, the Jew. <gasps> Then have him mount my horse, and you are to lead him through the city and proclaim to all that this is the man the king delights to honor. People of Shushan, behold, this man has delighted the king, and today he's being honored in this way. Well, oh, oh, it is. Yes. Enjoy this now, Mordecai. But later this week, you shall hang. Another wonderful feast, my dear. Now, what is your request? If I have again found favor in your eyes, my king, and it pleases you, save my life. Your life? And my cousin Mordecai's, and the lives of my people. It's not as if we are being sold as slaves, but we are all about to be killed. Who would dare threaten my queen's life? Who is he? Where is he? It is he, Lord Haman, because of his hatred of Mordecai. Mordecai? The man I have just honored? The man who saved me from the assassination plot? Please, Your Highness. Haman, will you dishonor my queen here in my house? But, Your Majesty, if I, if I can explain... Haman. Is Mordecai the man who is to hang tomorrow? Uh, well, I... Answer me! Yes, Your Majesty. But, uh, well, but... Uh... There will be a change of plans. You will take Mordecai's place on the gallows, and he shall take yours. Guards! Take Lord Haman to the gallows to be hung on the morrow, and bring Mordecai to me. He shall have honor in my kingdom. But, Your Majesty, I didn't know Her Highness was one of them. Or I wouldn't have. My lovely queen, nothing nor anyone shall cause you sadness. I shall issue letters throughout the kingdom that the Jews should not be killed. And if they are attacked, they are to defend themselves. My dear, your bravery and love have saved your people. Tomorrow and every year at this time, there shall be feasting and celebrations for your people in honor of you. Revelry that shall drown out the name of Haman. Another feast? This is where we came in. Goodbye, dear friends. You shall have safe journey through the kingdom. Thanks for everything. We'll never forget you. Yes, real cool. It's been a blast. Cool? Blast? 
You know, if I'd been ahead of Esther in that line, I might be Queen Margot now. Right. How about helping with these going away presents, Your Majesty? Oh! Here, take mine too! Ugh. Hey, fellas! This is no way to treat a queen!